Welcome to this tutorial about the computer-based instrumentation function, including six specific instruments. This video will introduce you to the first one of them, which is the metering window. You can access this function by simply clicking on the icon here once LVDEC is fully open. Let's take a look at the different settings of this new window. First, here on top, you get access to every important option of this function, which are printing setup here, acquisition settings here, and finally, meter settings and layout. Next to the printer icon right here, you get the single refresh button and the continuous refresh button. Depending on your needs, you can either decide to always refresh the data of those meters automatically, or refresh them only once in a while. Let's return to the acquisition settings here. In this window, you can set the sampling window you want to use and the fundamental frequency. It is suggested to set the same frequency as the network you are working on for more precise results. Now, here is the masterpiece. As you see, there are exactly 18 meters. Some are on and others are off. Each meter is fully customizable and they all work the same way, so I'm going to show you how to customize one of them and you will only need to apply the same technique for the others. Here is what is important to know about a meter. M1. Here is the meter's number, which cannot be changed. By clicking on it, you can bring the meter on or offline. E1. Here is the label of the meter. Right now, this meter tells me it reads value from the input voltage E1 of the 9063. You can change the label by clicking on it. The green window is, of course, the value itself. On the bottom is the value's type and unit. For example, this meter shows me the value of E1 in volts AC. By clicking on the type, I can change it to DC. This way, the same meter now shows me the DC voltage value of the input E1. If you click on the green window, you can switch the display from digital to analog. If you then click on the value's unit or type, you again have various possible configurations. You can even change the range of the needle meter by also clicking on it. To get back to a digital display, just click again on the green window here. Now, let's learn how to configure a meter. First, click on View, then on Meter Settings. This new window is where you choose what will be displayed on each meter. Here's the meter's number and the meter's label. Just enter, you get a very impressive quantity of value types and for each of them, a large quantity of inputs or functions. For example, for the values type voltage, you get input E1 to E4 plus a lot of functions associated with those inputs. If I select this one, for example, it means a single meter can give you the sum of the inputs E1, E2, and E3. To set a meter to a desired configuration, click on the type you want, click on the input or function you need, and then click on Apply. If you want to change more than one meter at a time, you can simply select a meter, here, meter 2, select the type and input, then select another meter, here, meter 3, and repeat. Once you have finished, click on Apply and all the meters selected will update automatically. Now if you go to the right side of LVDAC here, you can set every input as you want. For example, the analog input 3 is set to voltage. This means you will be able to select it in the voltage section here, but nowhere else. If I go in the phase angle section, you will notice there is no input or function available. If you want one, just go to the data acquisition and control settings here and set the analog input 3 to phase angle. Now you can select the meter of your choice, here meter 4, to read the value of the analog input 3 as a phase angle value. Note that for inputs I1 to I4, you can select low or high, which means that if your equipment is connected in the high input of the 9063 front panel, high must be selected here, 
otherwise the displayed value of that input by meter will be false. We now have four meters ready to be used. Just click on the continuous refresh button here and they will automatically start to show some values if the specified inputs are all correctly connected. Since the other meters are not used, you can limit the layout to reduce the space used by the metering function window. To do so, click on View and then on Layout and adjust the number of rows and columns you want to keep displayed. Finally, you can save your settings at any time by clicking here on File, then on Save As. I've already connected an induction motor to a power supply and connected some inputs of the 9063 to this circuit to give you a general idea of what can be easily achieved with this function. First, I open my saved settings by clicking on File, then on Open. Once loaded, I select Continuous Refresh of the meter's data. As you can see, I get in real time the input voltage, input current, speed, torque, active power, reactive power, total power, frequency of the input voltage, and mechanical power of the induction motor. Every important parameter relative to this motor is easily displayed and can be read here in seconds. Combined with the data table, which is able to record every meter found in the metering window, you get a powerful tool when it comes to data acquisition. This concludes the tutorial about the metering window.